Hi, it's Gary DeBach in Puyallup, Washington, USA, and I'm going to be giving an FSL operating video, which will teach any newcomer or experienced user exactly how to get the best performance from any compact ferrite sleeve loop antenna. Uh, these antennas are somewhat tricky. Uh, they have razor sharp tuning and it will take some practice. It will take some uh, operating skill in order to get the maximum performance out of these. And before I send out a few of these to uh, interested DXers, I've got to make sure that they're aware of the little quirks about operating these, the advantages and uh, some uh, drawbacks, to be perfectly frank. Okay, the first thing you need to know is because of the razor sharp high Q tuning, you need to be very careful and patient in finding the perfect signal boosting peak. Uh, there are some steps that will assist you in doing this. Uh, as you can see, I've got four FSLs set up and a couple of portables on this table. No matter what type of FSL you have, whether it's a ferrite bar model, a ferrite rod model, a monster FSL, whatever. The principles are all the same. So it's best to uh, practice these, get used to them, and when they become second nature, that's when you can go out to your uh, favorite ocean beach and really run wild. So um, the FSL antenna is a tuned loop similar to an air core box loop, but with much sharper tuning and much more concentrated performance. I'm going to, um, in my demonstrations, I'm going to be using the smallest of these models. This is the three inch baby FSL, just to show you the tuning procedures. Now, the very first of the tuning procedures is this. Depending upon what the frequency is on the medium wave band, whether it's a low band, high band, or the middle, you preset the variable tuning capacitor. Now let me show you how to do this. Um, your variable tuning capacitor is behind the tuning knob here, and you look at the plates. Uh, I am going to, in this first demonstration, I'm going to be tuning in 620 KPOJ, which is in Portland, Oregon, a French station from here. It's uh, in Portland, about 160 miles south. Okay, and I have my 3-inch baby FSL variable cap set to what I know is approximately 620. And the plates for this, you could say they're about 40% open. Okay, so if I was tuning in a mid-band station, I would set those plates preset a little bit uh, more open. If it was a high-band station, these tuning capacitor plates here would be almost fully wide open. Okay, so I'm going to give a demonstration here. I have a target station, 620 KPOJ, a French station. I have my ultralight radio here preset to 620. I'll see what kind of a signal I get just from the CC Skywave stock. As expected, I get barely almost nothing. Just a very tiny S1. Okay? So, I take my baby FSL I place the FSL in back of the ultralight radio. Okay, now I have my FSL preset to 620, so if you just started from scratch, you're not going to have that advantage. Let's see if I start from scratch here. Okay, first step, tune it in. Now you've got to be very slow and deliberate and careful about this. You can see I am very slow.
slowly and carefully adjusting this upwards until I start to hear some kind of a signal boost. I'm starting to hear it. Okay, I'm tuning back and forth to get the strongest boost on 620 KPOJ. Okay, so I've got a pretty good boost right now. 620 is right now up to about an S7 level. Although I do have some noise. So let me see if I can eliminate some noise by redirecting the FSL. Okay, so once I have the station tuned in with the peak, the next step is vary the distance between the ultralight or portable and the FSL antenna. I'll show you what difference this makes. Okay, now another point that you'll learn by experience on the low band, for example 620, you have a longer optimal distance between the FSL and the portable. And you have to play around with this. If you get it too close, you won't have the optimum. Too far away, you won't have the optimum. I think this is the best we're going to do on uh, 620. 620 is a pretty tough station, as you can see when I pull away the FSL. It disappears completely. Okay, so I've uh, done a low band station. Let me explain something. Only with ferrite rod models, you can also get a peak off to the side of the FSL. And then again, you have to play with the distance. So you can see I have a pretty decent peak off to the side of this ferrite rod model, which is a 3-inch baby FSL. Uh, this only applies to the ferrite rod models. Don't try this with a ferrite bar model like this 5-inch uh, frequent flyer. This is for de-expeditions and only boosts off to the front. Okay, so anyway, 620 has been boosted. I'm going to try a mid-band station here. Let me try 1070 um, in British Columbia, Victoria. Now, of course, Victoria is a different bearing in Portland. It's off to the northwest. I'm going to move this towards the northwest. Check out my stock signal on 1070. Oh, I got an ID. Uh, 1070 CFAX. About S5, I think. Okay, so by experience, I know that the inductive coupling distance on 1070 is going to be about 5 inches. Now this, this comes from practice, okay? So I think I'm right about there. I'm going to tune in 1070 on my FSL, which is still on 620. And I think, once again, I go slowly. 
Okay, uh, easily got, easily got CFAX up to S9 now. I'm going to vary the distance, as I explained before. Ontario's Premier has condemned the gathering at a popular Toronto park where thousands of people ignored physical distancing rules that Ford says it was very disappointing to see. Okay, I think I've got my maximum peak for CFAX. Once again, I re peak the FSL very slowly and carefully. And re peak. So I think I got my maximum boost on 1070 here. Yeah, you don't want to uh, violate the social distancing. I've got all the FSLs here separated widely so they don't spread anything. Uh, I've got one more uh, signal that I'm going to track down, which will be a high band signal. And for this one, I think I'll try 1700, which is a TIS station uh, in Auburn, Washington. Only 15 watts at about uh, 10 miles north. Quite a test. So let's set up everything. Since it's due north, I'm going to uh, set up everything due north. And 1700 is extreme high band. Okay, 1700. The TIS station is completely inaudible without an FSL. But I'm going to put it within one inch here because I know that's what high band is for optimal distance. And I'm going to tune it in on the other side, slowly and carefully. But 1700 is at the top, so I'll just have to go to the top of the band. And then vary the distance. COVID-19, what else, right? Okay, so uh, once again to summarize the steps, reset the variable tuning cap, tune them very carefully to match the frequency on the radio, and then once you get the peak, vary the distance between the radio and the FSL. You can repeat the steps to get the absolute best peak. Like I say, uh, on 1700, the top of the band, you're only about one inch separated between the two. For the extreme low end of the band, you better have it at least one foot. Um, so that's the basic rundown. I, I wanted to give this brief uh, operating demonstration before I send these out. Um, this baby FSL model, I've got a couple of these going to Ontario to Vince and John. Uh, this is a somewhat more powerful 5-inch uh, rod model going to Les in Alabama. And of course... Uh, if you master these principles, you'll be able to take something like the 5-inch uh, bar FSL model out to an ocean beach. Once again, the, uh, when the pandemic ends, uh, you can pack these in a 
um, hand carry luggage, you can run wild around the world on any ocean beach you care to set up on. Very lightweight, very convenient, and uh, this particular model in Hawaii had a total blast uh, here, clearing all continents except Europe last November. So I hope you understand and uh, can master these principles. Once you do, you'll be set to run wild with FSL antennas. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.